My first study abroad experience came in the fall of 2011 and actually started in Bryan Hall. I got an email one day telling me it's the last time to you know, apply for studying abroad if you want to go. If you're interested, it's the last time to do it. And that's something I've always interested in doing. But I never wanted, I never knew how to go about it. I never been out of the state of Florida in eight years. I was scared. I didn't I know what to travel. I didn't know what it'd be like. So I came up to Jason's office and I wanted to learn more information. So I sat down in his office and you know he talked to me about the opportunities, what are the processes that you go by studying abroad, or what are the opportunities out there. And it actually turned out, after 20 minutes of sitting in his office, I left with the paperwork signing and all the documents clearing that says I'm going to study abroad. And at first I thought, wait a minute, he just tricked me. <laughs> He's a good salesman. But then, actually, and I didn't know how I was going to sell it to my parents. But it, I, I sat down and thought, you know, I have the paperwork ready, I have the documents signed. Can I really do this? And I let it sit for three days until I actually accepted it without telling my parents. But then eventually it came time for the phone call. And I told them, hey mom, dad, I'm studying abroad. And I got a huge laughter. Ha, ah, nice joke. <laughs> they didn't believe me, and it's like, yeah, I will be staying abroad, I will be. And then, no, they still didn't believe me, and then that started allowing me to not believe myself, so I'm like, am I really doing this? And then I thought, you know, what is there to do at UF? Like, what am I going to be missing going in the fall? So, you know, what are possible things to do in games for well? I thought, you know, there's gated football games. Another thing, a good thing in the fall, there's also football games. Another fun thing to do. If the Gators are winning, go another football game, football game, and root for the Gators. That's a lot of that's a lot of good stuff in the fall. And then I thought, well, Tim Tebow graduated, so we're probably not going to be that good. And it actually turned out in this semester we weren't we weren't really that good. <laughs> we were really bad. But I decided, yeah, let me take this trip and let me you know let me book all the trips and everything and let me go study abroad. And then. I came home, it was the fall, and then I started to pack everything, and as soon as my parents saw me packing, they're like, whoa, this guy is really serious. I'm like, yeah, you haven't looked at the credit card statement? <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, it finally hit him that, yeah, I'm going abroad, and I'm going for a full fall semester, four months. And then I'm leaving, I actually flew in the A380, the two-story plane, it's pretty nice. Um, I was the first class, though, but it's good. But I ended up landing, and uh, suddenly I, I arrived in Madrid, and... You know, I was very confident in my ability to speak Spanish, but once I was put in this situation, all confidence went way out, right out the window. But here I am standing in the Madrid airport thinking, how am I going to get home? Or, you know, how am I going to give the directions to the taxi driver? And I wasn't brave enough to take the metro, but <laughs> I ended up, you know, have, luckily I found someone who could translate in English to... Uh, I had the address written down and she was able to explain to the taxi driver. And then he pulled up to, he drove me to the right location. It's a good thing it wasn't one of those sketch clubs like in New York. But I ended up in the right location, checked the address. And lucky enough, my host mom was waiting right outside for me. And then she opens the door, she walks outside. And then she said, oh, dad. She, she spoke nothing but Spanish. And she said, oh, meet my sisters. Not in English. And, you know, a lady came out. Another lady came out. A guy came out of the sun, and they just they just kept coming. I thought they were spawning from behind the door. I didn't know. It wasn't like and you know, sure enough, it was about 20 people standing outside, and I was like, "All of these are your brothers and sisters?" And she's like, "Yeah, we all have one dad." And I was like, "What is he doing?" <laughs> it turned out that his dad, her dad, was uh, he was a military guy. He did secret missions uh, for the Spanish military, and it, it kind of reminded me of someone. <laughs> Let's just say he had a lot of fun in his missions. <laughs> but uh, he was a, he was a cool family. Um, this was the first time that I was able to, you know, test my language. Uh, none of the people were, none of the family members spoke English, and it was time for me to explain, you know, where I'm from. They explained everything to me, and you know, obviously not all the the not all the translation got through, and a, a lot of things went right over my head. But eventually, you know, I got accustomed to the culture. I started, live, I started, you know, finding things out for myself. And, you know, living with a host mom, one of the biggest responsibilities of the host mom is to cook, clean. And I realized, man, if I have to eat, I better learn fast. 
so one, her first question to me was, what do you want to eat? And I, you know, I was pretty nervous. I didn't know how to say anything in Spanish. And I was like, Mensa, apple. I'll have an apple to eat. And then she, she went to the fridge, got an apple, started cutting it up. And then all of a sudden, she throws it in a frying pan and starts frying. I was like, what is, is she crazy? What did she do? Frying the apple? It actually turns out, as I learned, in, in Madrid, in Spain, they fry everything. Ice cream, it's ridiculous. But, you know, I actually tasted it. It actually was pretty good. I would never try that. But over the time, she started cooking all these unique things in the Spanish dish. Uh, like patatas, the, uh, you know, like a potato, that's a potato uh, pie right there. Uh, paella, yeah, despacho, tapas. Uh, I got to try all these different foods. All these unique, unique uh, things that you guys could probably say, oh, I could find that at Chipotle. She's not going to find that there. All these are tr uh, tr traditional Spanish dishes. Uh, in addition to that, I also got a chance to bond with her family members. She had a niece and a nephew that were about seven years, one was seven and one was three. And one thing I learned that from the Spanish culture, from the kids to the adults, the kids will correct you if you're wrong. <laughs> I've made a lot of mistakes with them, and you know that's a good opportunity for me to practice. So when I made you know, speaking errors, they would correct me right on the spot. But it was also an opportunity for me to teach them English, and it created a huge bonding experience. Apparently, they were so fascinated with my iPhone that you know it, we we had some good relationships. Let's say that it was really fun. We didn't get in any fights and everything because they were going to also be living in the house. And uh, in addition to that. It's also a good opportunity for me to go even more and experience their culture. As I mentioned, I was scared about giving up the Gator games. As I was watching, I was following it on ESPN, and you know, we won four games when we started losing when we got to our <coughs> meet of the schedule. So, you know, I was like, all right, the Gators are not too good. What do people in Madrid like? What is their favorite sport in Spain? Soccer. soccer. They're crazy for soccer. And actually, I actually got the time to live near to. Uh, the Real Madrid Stadium. So I actually went to a Real Madrid game, and they're really, they're really passionate about their soccer. Um, so much passion that a lot of them actually went to their Madrid game versus Barcelona. And oh my goodness, a lot of people were so happy about the game they forgot to shower. Every time it was a goal, oh my goodness, I have to go down. <laughs> the body odor was at an all-time high, but it was a great experience. <laughs> It was a great experience. It was one of the best experiences of my life. You think the atmosphere in the swamp is electric? Think about what happens when the best soccer players over all over the world are in one stadium. And you have a stadium that fits almost like one and a half times the size of the people in the swamp. And people are going crazy. And they actually came fresh off the year they won the World Cup. So that's still fresh in their mind. But you know, after experiencing all the cultures and all the things in Madrid, just like Latrice, mentioned earlier, I started having that itch, that itch to travel. And, you know, I ended up uh, traveling to new places outside all over Madrid. I started going to places like Barcelona, and I got to see uh, the Familia, uh, Cathedral of uh, Sagrada Familia. And it was a good opportunity. Uh, I mean, the fall, there's not a lot of tourists. But I also got to see, like, the beaches, the Mediterranean. It's a gorgeous beach. Um, actually, you know, I learned that there's a lot of things you could get away with on the beaches there, or a lot less you could get away with there than in the United States. But it was a gorgeous, it was a gorgeous location. So I went to places like uh, the park from Gaudi. Uh, all these new experiences that uh, I only saw on TV. In addition to places like Barcelona, I also toured other cities in Madrid, uh, other cities in Spain. And you know, I went to you know, Sevilla or Segovia with the aqueducts. And I got to see, uh, hopefully my house gets that big, but the Palacio de Real Madrid, that's where the king and queen stays uh, off nights in, when he's in the office. But it's a good opportunity to uh, see all these, all these experiences, see all these locations. And, you know, I, I actually got even more of the itch and got more adventurous. Uh, by the, this time, I went to Paris. And by the time this, I went to Paris, it was actually November. And by November, one of the goals that I wanted to do in Madrid was to learn Spanish. It actually turned out, since I had so much opportunity to practice, practicing with the kids, uh, practicing with the adults and with my host family, I was actually thinking in Spanish. Thoughts I didn't have to translate anymore. It just came to me. Just like if someone were to have a conversation, you know, you respond right off the bat. I actually brought that to Paris. So, you know, as soon as I got off the plane, I was just looking, talking to the French about, you know, where's this location? Where's, 
the, uh, the Eiffel Tower. I'm speaking to him in Spanish, and it throws everyone off. Like, wait a minute, this American guy is speaking Spanish in French, in France, and he's black too. So, <laughs> so it, was, it, it threw a lot of people off. But it was a great experience, and you know, I'll see all these locations on TV, but seeing them in real life, that's something different. That's that's being in a moment right there, and you know, doing it with friends. That creates all the experiences that you remember for a lifetime. It's always. Uh, good to look at when you're asking your friends, what are they doing? And I'm studying for this exam, studying for that exam. I'm traveling. That was a great experience for me. And, you know, I realized how lucky I was. But, you know, as everything, everything comes to an end. And, you know, by the last days that I was in Madrid, uh, you know, I had to tell the family. The family already knew I was leaving, but it was really hard for the kids to grasp that I'm leaving. They didn't believe me as, as a common trait. No one ever believes me when I say anything. <laughs> but, you know, they couldn't grasp that I was going to leave. You know, I was part of the family. I became one of those 22 brothers and sisters. And not literally, but, you know, I became part of the family. And, you know, it was a great experience. Those people really loved me. And, you know, the kids actually bawled on my last time there. It was, it was really sad, but um, I really wanted to see my family as well. But uh, it was... Uh, I love the experience. I always think back to that time. And, you know, one of the key messages that, you know, I want to share with you guys is, you know, never be afraid to go outside of the box. Uh, I was a person that never been out of the state of Florida. And I never knew what it was like to go out there and experience new things. I always knew the benefits that I could have, but never wanted to take that step to initialize it. And it, yeah, it took me some coercion from Jason and some trickery. But I thought that trickery was, you know, in the best because... I had to get myself out of that state of being in the box to get out to experience those moments that actually make your life the most memorable. So, that's it for me.